Edge at 11 starts now. Well, tonight on The Edge, there's something in the air in Detroiters on Detroit's east side. Well, they don't like it. Concerned with air quality from big trucks and factories, residents came together tonight looking for change. They drive really fast and they drive on residential streets, um, which both is an air quality issue, but it's also a safety issue. Eastside Climate Action Coalition hosted Wednesday night's town hall on the steady flow of trucks from auto plants on the city's east side. In this community, we have one of the highest, we have the highest rates of asthma hospitalizations in the state in the zip code. The city of Detroit does not have the same kind of restrictive trucking ordinances that other big cities have. Longtime Detroiter Loretta Powell lives three minutes from Stellantis, Jefferson North, and took part in an air quality control test by the East Side Climate Action Coalition. For months, she says it read moderate to poor. I'm very concerned for myself, um, the, the community, because I'm a community leader, so I'm very concerned about what's going on in our neighborhood and also the people who have been living here already for so long around the plants. Groups like Just Air spoke of the technology they're using using to take on the issue of air quality control to motivate stakeholders to activate change. We set up cameras to actually look at truck traffic autonomously so that can help enforce idling, how much tr trucks are going down a certain route, but also because we have the monitoring, we can connect the pollution data with the time of the truck passing by the camera. Fox 2 has been covering air quality issues in and around Jefferson North. Complaints of fumes and air pollution concerns. That was validated last month when the automaker ordered by state regulators to pay almost $85,000 in fines for air quality violations in its paint shop. Stellantis responding to this latest violation saying in part, quote, both plants have been in compliance with their respective permits for more than six months. Meantime, Detroit City Council members in attendance say they're actively drafting new trucking ordinances to be voted on. Also tonight, there hasn't been a debate like this since the giant slide went up on Belle Isle. We're talking about the new Hollywood-style electric, uh, I should say, Detroit sign erected along I-94 near Central Street. There are some people who like it, but as Fox News' Dave Kinchin reports, others feel like it's not living up to the hype. It's a sign that speaks loud and proud. You know what this is. This is Detroit, baby. I love the sign, and I love Detroit, and I love all, everything about Detroit. It's a great move for Detroit, uh, like I said, with everything coming in with the NFL draft. Detroiters and those across the region getting their first up-close look at the new Hollywood-style sign spelling out Detroit on I-94 after months of hype. As we inch closer to the NFL draft, putting our gem of a city on the national stage. But not everyone is is signing on. The font could have been, especially the D, we could have put emphasis with the O English D. That's what we known for. That's where the culture really is. So it may be the color blue. Since that represents in our three teams, we have blue everywhere. So yeah, blue signs with the O English D that we would all be proud. Detroit rapper G-Mac Cash dropped a new song, putting the sign on blast. One thing I'ma do, I'ma state the fact. Say the sign that we ordered, you can take it back. Social media also has something to say. One person preferring the font logo for the city of Southfield over the Detroit sign. Another references a face of displeasure made by the famous Thomas the Tank Engine. And one person is seeking a vote, asking which is more embarrassing, the golden ring representing Sterling Heights or Detroit spelled out on 94. So with the internet being the internet and some people poking fun at the sign, we asked the city for their thoughts on the mixed reviews. I love it. We love it. Any other thoughts on the feedback online? Or? I love it and we love it. Either way, it's a new Motor City icon that's here to stay in Detroit. Dave Kinchin on the edge. I do want to point one thing out. All that orange fencing that you see there. Mm. Uh, talked to a couple of sources today. I said, why is there orange fencing around the green sign? It just kind of looked off. Said they're waiting to plant a bunch of flowers and other things. So once I mean, they do that, that's important. I'm glad you got yeah. to the bottom of that because it can be kind of... Because uh, well, when you move the orange of... fencing, it'll look a lot better. You bet. But... <laughs> One thing we can agree on with that as well is that the beautiful spring weather and followed by some possible rain will help those flowers. Uh, we certainly hope those flowers will get some water. And uh, hey, you know what? We're going to get that rain. Captain Rich Luderman has his eyes on the sky. Lots of green on your map. Lots there. of green. Uh, yeah, we had great weather yesterday. 
and again today, but now the rain is moving in quickly from the south, and it's going to be with us for the rest of tonight, for Thursday and for Friday. Live pictures from right here in Southfield. A couple of drops now showing up on the lenses above Nine Mile Road. It's all light stuff. You can see on Sky Tracker, rain has been surging into Lenaway and Monroe counties, now up around Ann Arbor, around the airport as well, moving right over the city of Detroit. Now, it's going to be another couple hours before the rain gets up to Pontiac and Flint and Port Huron, but it will, and uh, we're can expect a damp Thursday morning drive. Daytime highs today, 65 for us. Remember yesterday we hit 76 degrees, so numbers were down just a bit. 65 and 48 today at Metro Airport. There are the records. Not much rain yet, but over the next uh, 48 hours, we could see one to two inches of rain uh, between Thursday and Friday. It's cool out there, but it's not terribly cold. A lot of us have numbers in the middle 50s. There's that breeze picking up from the east and southeast. 44 in Newberry, 59 in Chicago, and in Columbus. Chilly around Toronto, 57 degrees. So watch our next weather system. It's going to be with us for Thursday and for Friday. Friday. Now, Friday, we're going to get on the back side of this low pressure, and that's when the winds kick up. So we'll have some wet weather to end the work week and some gusty winds. It's going to be chilly into Friday night as well. I'll show you some of the rain totals, and you can see some of these uh, deeper, darker reds for Livingston County for the tip of the thumb, and that's where perhaps as much as two inches of rain could fall. Now, if you're thinking about severe weather tomorrow, it's going to be down over eastern Ohio for Zanesville, for Athens, uh, for Youngstown and Athens. Akron, so we are not expecting severe weather here. Occasional rain showers for tonight. We're down to 49. Tomorrow's a rainy kind of day. Breezy at times, 62. And then notice not a lot of improvement for Friday. 49 degrees, that's it for Friday. But much better for the weekend. Saturday and Sunday both look dry. It stays mild into next week. Group, we'll check that for you at 4 a.m. All right, we'll talk to you then. Thanks so much, Rich. There's a boil water advisory in effect for parts of Troy tonight. The city says a malfunction in the Great Lakes Water Authority system caused water pressure to drop and now administrators say the quality of drinking water can't be guaranteed for 48 hours. The impacted areas are between Crooks, Adams and South Boulevard and Square Lake. If you need more information, you can contact the City of Troy Water Department. A warning tonight from the Detroit Health Department. A four year old has been diagnosed with measles. The family is now isolating, but officials are warning other people may have been exposed at the following places. The Acadian Urgent Care on Springwells from noon to 1.30 on April 1st. Rite Aid on West Verner from 1.45 to 2 p.m. also on April 1st. And Children's Hospital of Michigan's Emergency Room on Bobian on April 3rd between 5 and 10 a.m. Anyone who has been potentially exposed should monitor themselves for symptoms for 21 days. Especially for our younger patients, uh, if they haven't had an immunization, this is the perfect time to get one before um, you get an infection. The Detroit Health Department offers vaccines Monday through Friday. Vaccines are free to children. A five-year-old boy suffers a serious head wound on a school bus in Taylor. His father is now asking what could have happened that would put a hole in his child's head. We want to warn you, the photos of the boy's injuries are graphic. The five-year-old is a student at Eureka Heights Elementary. We're told the incident happened last week while the bus was parked at the school. The child actually needed six staples to his head. The bus driver alerted the principal and the principal called the parents, but it's still not clear how this all happened. When you ask him what happened this day, he says, I don't want to talk about it. With a serious tone, I don't want to talk about it. And when I walked into the school, he, d he doesn't even have a, a, a piece of cotton or anything on it at all. It's an open wound and blood was still pouring down. And they, they should have called 911 before they called me. District leaders have met with the family. They tell us they're open to having more meetings. In the meantime, the child's staples will be removed in the next few days. And those are just some of the gunshots fired early this morning at a Pontiac apartment community. In all, three people were shot at North Hill Farms, and one of the victims has died. We're told there was a party in the parking lot and then an argument. 24-year-old Rajan Barnes was killed. He was a genuine person. Um, you know, he treated everybody as if they was his family, you know, so very unfortunate. So I feel like with that being said, we just need to do better as a community and as a whole because we all we got. 
Neighbors tell us there have been three separate shootings in the past year at the complex. I've been trying to leg. Don't fight with them. I'm still fighting. Sorry, I'm sorry, please. Prudence responding. The subject is not secure at this time. I can still fighting with them. We got one self transport to Sparrow, officer. I got a uh, second officer with a gunshot wound. Frantic calls in Lansing today where two officers were shot while searching for a suspect. We're told the officers were looking for a gunman behind an apartment building. Once they found him, there was a shootout. The two officers were struck and so was the 28-year-old suspect. Police say he was wanted for a violent crime earlier this week. All are expected to be okay. Michigan State Police will now handle the investigation. Well, the fight isn't over for folks hoping to save a historic building in Kego Harbor. They continue to argue against the wrecking ball. Protesters gathered outside the former Roosevelt Elementary late this afternoon. Last week, a judge dissolved a court order that blocked demolition of the old school and denied a preliminary injunction. Supporters say the building could be preserved and converted into housing. We're asking for fiscal responsibility. We're asking for environmental sustainability. There's a crisis for um, low income and moderate income housing, and this could solve all of it. Th this is our identity. Kego Harbor, if, if this school isn't here, we just look like another strip mall uh, city. West Bloomfield School says the building has structural problems. The school board voted to tear it down last month.